Hello, my name is Andy, and I am the Village Idiot, but I'm armed with a car and a GoPro, and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to North Lincolnshire on a beautiful, bright, sunny morning. And I'm in a very small village just to the north of Kidby. In fact, I can see parts of Kidby from here, including Kidby Power Station. If I turn the camera around, you'll be able to see what I mean. There it is in the very far distance. Now you may have noticed, regular viewers, I did that without moving my hands. I've got a tripod now and I'm using these next four episodes here in North Lincolnshire to test it out. So it might be a little bit different to what you're used to. Regardless, I hope you enjoy the parish of Amcots. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Amcots is a village and civil parish in the North Lincolnshire district of Lincolnshire, situated on the Isle of Axome. Once again, we're on the bank of the River Trent, the western bank this time, facing Flixborough on the east bank. The 2001 census recorded a population of 219 for the parish, which increased to 262 at the 2011 census. Amcots may be small, but it has a few things to talk about. Most notably, the Amcots Moor woman, who is something of a local legend. We'll get to her shortly. First though, some facts about the village. Formerly a township of Althorpe Parish, Amcots was created a civil parish in 1866 and enlarged in 1885 by gaining part of neighbouring Luddington. According to the Doomsday Book, in 1086, the village had just eight households, which would have been considered fairly big at that time. The meaning of the name Amcots, which by the way is also found as Amcotes in old records, is from the Old English Ammer and Cot, which means cottage of a man called Ammer. Amcots is a part of the Humber Head Levels, an area that was once covered by the glacial Lake Humber. When the glacier receded, the area was a boggy marshland, which was eventually drained by the Dutch engineers we know so much about already. So who is the Amcots Moor woman? Well, nobody knows her name, but it's the name given to a bog body discovered in 1747 near the village. The woman is believed to have lived sometime between 200 and 400 AD, the Roman period. A peat digger unearthed the body of a woman through roughly six feet of peat moss. A doctor by the name of George Stovin, a local antiquarian of Hurst Priory Belton, would finish the excavation. With the body, a pair of shoes was found, one of which was damaged by the shovel of its discoverer. The sandals were said to be a tawny colour and to be pliable. Stovin took away a long bone, hand and both feet, as well as the shoes. The rest of the remains were reburied in Amcott's churchyard at a later date. Stovin believed the woman had been overcome by some strong eddy of water, although it's possible she was a sacrifice and placed in the marsh intentionally. No one will ever know for certain. There are no boggy marshlands here now thanks to a certain Mr Vermoyden, a man whose work would anger a legendary bog spirit named Tiddy Munn. These days it's a wonderful agricultural village. Amcots has little in the way of amenities, but it did have more. There was a Church of England school here built in 1860 as a national school which closed in 1961. In 1974 properties in the village were subject to significant damage because of the Flixborough disaster which we'll get to in that episode. Demographically, this is a village that has a population density of 32.61. All of its residents are white British, and the average house price is £255,000. The few amenities Amcots has include a phone box, which still has a working phone, but it's also the village's book exchange as well. 
There's no post office, but there is a post box sited next to the phone box, once again providing that vital service. Amcot's has no shops though, the nearest is in Kidby. It does have a bus service, it's served by two in fact. These are the 35 and the 360, which run to Scunthorpe and Ghoul, respectively. The Jubilee Garden sits at the junction of Chapel Lane and Church Street, and it's a nice peaceful area of the village. In truth though, anywhere is peaceful out here. It's where the parish notice boards, plural because I found two, are located, and you can mark this one off in the list in North Lincolnshire. Amcott's Grade 2 listed Anglican Parish Church is dedicated to St Mark, and was built in 1853. In the mid-15th century, a chantry chapel was founded here by Geoffrey Kroll and William Amcott. That's no coincidence either, the names Amcott and also Amcote, a slight variation, are conducive with this village. The modern church replaced the aforementioned chapelry, which was dedicated to St Thomas a Becket. It fell down from decay in either 1849 or 1850, depending on which source you believe. The village's war memorial is in the churchyard, and that's not the only notable thing you can find in here. Stick around, you'll see what I mean shortly. The church is built of stone and can seat 180 people. I did have a quick look around to see if I could potentially locate where the Amcots Moor woman's remains are buried, but I wasn't able to find them. Are they marked at all, Amcots locals? Let me know. The village pub is the Ingleby Arms. The name Ingleby is another heavily associated with this area of North Lincolnshire. The pub is also part of the Tiddymun Trail. See the picture bit for that. The Wesleyan Methodists built a chapel here in 1870 and a school in 1886. The village also had a chapel for the primitive Methodists prior to 1930. This I believe is the latter. In the churchyard is something called the Amcots Butterfly Garden. This is the result of hard work from the village locals in 2019. It was developed for the benefit of both the residents and visitors to the church. It had a few aims. One of them was to teach children the role of the butterfly in pollination and their environmental benefit. Children were given caterpillar packs to look after, which were eventually released when they were fully grown butterflies. The garden was also open to coincide with the 45th anniversary of the Flixborough disaster, which not only damaged houses, it also damaged part of this churchyard too. You'll notice butterfly stones painted by children and local artists. These surrounded the memorial in the churchyard. Now one thing you will see quite a lot of from Amcots are wind turbines. Now over there, I'm stood on Middle Lane, you can see wind turbines in the distance. Some of those wind farms we will have seen before in the very, very far distance is Ghoul Fields Wind Farm. That's one we definitely uh, have seen on the channel before. Now it's interesting, in the recent storms, Storm Eunice and the other one that I forget the name of, something like 47% of the UK's power was generated by wind. It's no surprise when you see how many wind farms there are in this country. Sitting as it does on the bank of the Trent, it will come as no surprise to learn that once again, we're in an area that had a ferry over the water. The ferry ran from here, from a small landing across to Flixborough. There's no definitive date for when it ceased, but it's widely believed to be when Kidby Bridge opened in 1915 and 1916, negating the need for ferries. You're looking here at Flixborough Wharf, with a ship in port. It's a dedicated steel terminal comprising of 13,380 square metres. It's able to accommodate vessels of up to a maximum length of 100 metres, and the berths are serviced by overhead gantry cranes capable of lifting up to 35 tonnes. Okay, that's pretty much it for the main walk around the village, but we're not quite done. We need to drive up Shore Road now, on the western bank of the River Trent, to catch Meerdyke. Meerdyke sits just north of Amcots on Shore Road between it and Garthorpe. To be honest, calling it a hamlet would be generous, it's really just some isolated buildings. However, this area has a bit of history to it. The hamlet of Murray, or alternatively the Marshes, was here. It was a medieval village which was abandoned and no surface evidence now remains of it. It was supposedly at the outfall of the Meerdyke, which is a stream running to the Trent. At the time of the Doomsday Book in 1086, Murray was listed as having three households. 
There are a few more deserted medieval settlements along the Trent, and our next episode out here will highlight another one of them. To get there, all we need to do is follow Shore Road. Okay, it's time you guys had a picture bit for Amcots, and here that comes right now. These first few images in the picture bit I took myself. They come from the information board outside the Ingleby Arms. The first one shows the Trent in the 19th century, which used to freeze over, with villagers stood on the ice. The second is an image from the 1974 Flixborough disaster, which affected Amcots. Amcots Village, lovely little place, never been here before, never been here before and uh, I wonder why sometimes with places like this, I've said that a few times, why haven't I been to a certain place and I don't understand why with Amcots, it's got quite a bit to talk about hasn't it and the Amcots Mall woman, absolutely fascinating, brilliant, uh, certainly something that uh, is worthwhile including in this episode. Time for me to go to my next one, I've been Andy, otherwise known as the Village Idiot, this has been the Parish of Amcots in North Lincolnshire, and I'm out. Thank you.